What is going on world? The Hungarian experiment here and in this video I'm going to discuss and explain my one year transformation. About four years ago I really started experimenting with my life, my lifestyle, my body, fitness, nutrition, everything. I tried to eliminate as many factors as I could and I wanted to experiment around and to see what gave you the most optimal results. Now this last year I believe I refined it and I went really strict on my lifestyle and my life. I wanted to prove a few things and that is the whole point of this video. Now one of the first things I wanted to prove this year is that I did not need to go into a bulking phase to put on muscle. As you guys will see the comparison photos just pop up and down as I'm talking here, you guys can see that over this last year and if you followed along my journey throughout the year that I don't believe I went over 8 to 10% body fat and I was still able to put on a noticeable change in muscle mass. The second thing I wanted to prove, which kind of coincides with the first one, is that I wasn't just not bulking, but I was in a caloric deficit for 70 to 80% of the year, which I will discuss and go over in the next few minutes here. Point number three I wanted to prove is that I could put on muscle using a minimalist approach or minimum effective dose. Instead of going into the gym and literally going to the point where my muscles were aching and sore that night or even the next day, I never got to that point. I would do just enough to feel a nice burn and pump going and I would stop so that way I could be optimal and give full effort in the gym the next day. And the fourth thing I wanted to prove for you guys is that life is situational. Although different things came up in my life over this year like Sunfest or the 10,000 calorie challenge or the 40 hour fast, I was still able to manipulate my life to get the results I wanted. And as you guys will see here, over the last week or two before I cut down, I had beer and alcohol almost every single day. I had cheat foods and cheat days the two or three weeks prior to my one year cut down and I still managed to get veins in my shoulders and all up in my traps while still being able to enjoy food and enjoy life. So how did I accomplish this all? If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I really suggest you do. I try to give videos like this where I sit down and do a little talk time where I discuss things in front of the camera and try to give you a nice informative breakdown but I also have videos where I show you my full day. Whether it's a typical day and I lead you through my typical day which is my workouts, fasting and what I eat and when I eat or it's a situational day where I might have to tweak some things in my day but I'm still trying to get the most optimal results out of life. And on top of that, I also have videos showing cheat days and fast days. So if you guys are interested, make sure you go check out a few of those videos because if it's something like a situational day where I'm going on vacation or I'm going off to like a theme park for the day, you may never get to see the things I manipulated in my life on that day to get the most optimal results out of life. So make sure you guys go check out a few of those videos, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown of my whole year right now. I typically wake up around 9 to 10 in the morning, I do my stretches and experiments, I do whatever work I have to do around the house, then I head off to the gym for around noon to 1 o'clock. Typically I'll get my first meal around 2 to 3 o'clock and then I stop eating around 8 to 9 o'clock. So my body is fasted for about 17 to 19 hours every single day. Now this is called intermittent fasting. I have many videos on intermittent fasting so make sure you guys go check that out and I also have a video called how to easily put on muscle while cutting fat and in that video I discuss how there was a study done on a test group and they found that people who fasted for 20 hours had an almost 2000% increase in their growth hormone. So that is one of the reasons that I believe I was able to put on noticeable muscle mass this year and still manage to keep lean. I typically shoot for about 23 to 2500 calories. Now I found in the past before I started experimenting around with intermittent fasting and I was getting six to eight small meals a day that 2300 to 2500 calories was almost a surplus for me. I would not cut fat while staying within that range. 
But when I started applying 23 to 2,500 calories into a four to seven hour eating window, I found that over long term, about two to three weeks, that I would slowly cut fat and I would see it on paper as well as in the mirror on my body. So 2,300 to 2,500 calories for me in a four to seven hour eating window puts me in a caloric deficit. I can see fat coming off my body and can document it on paper over an extended period of time. Now I find for myself that after about four to seven days, situationally, depending on if I'm trying to cut fat or if I'm just trying to maintain my level, I find that my body gets kind of run down. After four to seven days of being in a caloric deficit, my body's like hungry for a restock. So I will have a big, huge cheat day where I shoot for about five to 8,000 calories. So that's basically all I did there for the last year. I would eat for four to seven days in a caloric deficit in my intermittent fasting eating window, and then I'd spike it up with a huge cheat day. Now, over this year, I've been experimenting around with how do I do my day after my cheat day? And that all depends on my goals and the results I want to see. If I'm worried about cutting down like I was for this transformation video, I might just fast the whole day after my cheat day, or I may just get in an extremely low calorie day, like 1500 calories for that day, because I'm making up for all the calories that I got in the day before. So that all depends on the time of the year. In the winter time, I will go about seven days of eating in a caloric deficit, but more around the 2,500 calorie scale compared to the 2,300 calorie. I'll get in more foods that I enjoy because it's longer, seven days. And then I'll have a cheat day, probably fast the day after. Now, when I was cutting down for this transformation, I would only go about four days of being around 22 to 2,300 calories to make sure that I'm getting that proper fat loss in. But I found by day three or four, I was drained out a lot faster. So spike it up with a cheat day, maybe not go for the 8,000 calorie side, maybe stay more towards the 5,000. And then the next day, just fast or only have like one meal and only eat it within an hour. So life is situational. You have to figure out how your life works with your lifestyle, with the results you want, what is going on in your life. So there you have it. That's the procedure that I followed to get this noticeable muscle mass, as well as managing to stay below 10% body fat over the whole year. If you guys like, go check out some of my videos from the past. You'll see that I never got loss of definition in my abs and I was still able to put on muscle. Let's just take a look over the last month here. This is my tracking booklet. So this is where I did my one year transformation. So as you can see here, 161.9, we can even go back all the way to January here. I did not go over 170. I don't even think 165 at times. So oh, 167.4 here, but that was after a cheat day. So, and as you can see there, I fasted. So there was only one time there in February, right after I ate four medium pizzas that I hit 170. But besides that, I managed to stay quite lean, as you can see from my body weight here, over the year and I still managed to put on noticeable muscle mass. All right, so let's just look at the few weeks before the transformation video there. So as you can see here, look, cheat day, cheat day, 10,000 calorie challenge. So in the month prior to my one year transformation cut down, I still had two days of eating whatever the hell I wanted and a day of extremely excessive eating. Also, if you guys are interested, make sure you're following me on Instagram. The link is in the description there. I have here, here was two days before the transformation. There I was eating some gelato and I had like some girly drink at uh, Coco's there while we were in Grand Bend. Day before that, I had a whole pitcher of beer to myself. <laughs> and three days before that, I had sangria. So I believe and what I'm trying to prove is that although you want to be getting as much micronutrients in your system as well. It's all a balance of your hormones. It doesn't matter so much what you're eating as long as it's having a good hormonal output on your body. Carbs. Beer is carbs. Bread is carbs. Fruit is carbs. You want to look at what's going to give you the most hormonal output and what are you willing to risk 
or sacrifice on that day because you've already hormonally outputted yourself in another factor of your life. If you're getting it 120% in the gym and you're eating nice and clean, I believe it's okay to smoke a cigarette here and there or to have a few beers because Hormonally, you're not damaging yourself as much as someone who's sitting on the computer all day long, who goes to the gym, walks on the treadmill for an hour, and then is doing all this stuff to them. If that lazy guy was to cut three hours off his sleep, compared to me cutting three hours off my sleep, I believe that the hormonal impact will be a lot more negative for him compared to me because I'm already optimizing my hormones as much as I can in my life. So if you guys are interested in the foods I ate and what I ate, make sure you follow me on Instagram and make sure you go check out some of my day to days over the last couple weeks. Let's discuss my time in the gym and my lifts. I've been working out for over a decade now, but to be 100% honest with you guys, I have not felt better and felt like I've been lifting better until I started optimizing my hormones with the foods I ate and through intermittent fasting. Now. Over this last year, I learned a lot of things about time under tension and overloading the muscle, which I believe also helped me to get such amazing muscle growth benefits. If you guys are interested, make sure you check out my video called Maximize Muscle Growth While in the Gym. I took the techniques that I discussed in that video and that's all I've been doing over this year. So this year, in terms of my physique, my main focus was my weak points. I believe that my weak points are my legs and glutes, my inner and lower chest, as well as my obliques and developing a nice V from the front as well from the back. I will be coming out with more fasted workout videos in the future so you guys can see the exercises I did, as well as how I perform the reps, whether nice and slow with time under tension or I would overload the muscle. This year, I really wanted to see how recovery works with intermittent fasting. So I did some things like I would work out my chest five days in a row to see that if I would have pain and if I would feel like I was recovering the next day. And to be honest, throughout all the experiments I did, I did not feel any pain. I'll show you this last month and you'll see how often I did chest. Back to July here, weak points I did chest. Here we got chest, 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 Chest on my two a day, weak points is chest. So right there, one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. Took a day off for delts, then I did chest. Weak points would be chest again. Chest, 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 chest. So as you guys can see there, this month alone, I probably did chest about 15 to 18 days out of the month because I wanted to experiment around and I wanted to learn. That's why situationally, don't follow along my program. Don't follow along what I'm doing. Use what I'm doing and saying as a guide and hopefully learn to manipulate your life around my guide as well as other people's guides. Don't take any program or routine and think it's gonna work perfectly for you. You need to take that routine, apply it on your life, and find what you like and what you don't like, and learn what works best for you, so that a year from now, you don't have to struggle again learning a new program and a new routine. As you guys saw there, delts, back, arms, I didn't focus on that much this year because I believe they're already developed enough. I need to catch up my weak points to the rest of my body and if I can fill out my weak points by the end of this year, which hopefully I will be able to do, then next year will just be a put on muscle year and that is the year that you guys will see some real change in me and my body, especially with how much I am learning and progressing every single week and every single month. I now wake up and I can see fat loss in the mirror and I can see muscle growth on my body. It's absolutely insane. I cannot believe how well intermittent fasting is working with me and my lifestyle and my body and with the foods I want and I need to eat. So I absolutely love intermittent fasting. I will most likely never go back. There may be a day or two where I'll be on vacation where I might eat for the whole day, but overall, I will always go back to a four to seven hour eating window. It just works for me, it works for my life, and I absolutely love it. So my goal this year as a Hungarian experiment for my one year transformation was to prove four things.
The first is I wanted to prove I didn't need to bulk to put on muscle. The second was that I could be in a caloric deficit for 70 to 80% of the year and still put on muscle while keeping my fat levels low. And number three, I wanted to prove that I could put on muscle while using a minimalist approach. I never went to the point of pain. I never went to the point of where I couldn't walk or I couldn't lift my arms the next day because I overdid it. And as you guys saw there, I've been doing two a days for the last three months. Every Sunday, I've been doing two workouts one in the afternoon and one at night, still using a minimalist approach and the next day I'm not in pain. Today's Monday, I did chest twice yesterday and I could still go hit chest today if I wanted to because I am not in pain. Fourth thing I wanted to prove over this year is that life is situational. I believe that life is situational. You need to learn to manipulate life to give you the results you want by adding as much knowledge and as much skill to your arsenal as possible. Well, thank you very much for watching my explanation of my one year transformation. I hope this gave you guys a bit of an idea of the factors and the way I've taken my last year. The whole point of these videos and my channel is to provide something that I always wanted as a child. I always wanted to see in depth into someone's life that I wanted to emulate, to see the factors that they did. What were they putting into their body? When were they putting it into their body? How were they lifting? What were they doing with their day to day? So hope this video was a little informative for you. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you go leave it down in the comment box for me. Make sure you subscribe so you can follow along some of my day to days and make sure you hit that like button. I am the Hungarian Experiment.